Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my Java Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial. Today, I'm going to do something that I think is extremely important. I'm going to show you how to solve programming problems, and these are going to be your programming problems. This isn't going to be a programming problem that's already been solved. This is going to be something that's custom, something that you need. And I'm very specifically going to be answering a question in this tutorial that I've received many times over the past couple weeks. And that question was how to print a tree structure on a console. So in essence, if we have an array and we want to print out a tree structure like you see here, not with the lines and so forth, but just dashes and then a number and then dashes and another number and another number and so forth and so on, how exactly do we do this? In solving this problem in this tutorial, I'm going to act like I don't know that much about programming. I'm going to go out of my way to try to approach this as a person that has a limited understanding of programming so that we can teach a subject that I think is extremely important, which is to teach how to solve any problem, not just how to solve one specific problem. So let's get into it. Okay, so if we want to actually come in here and figure out how we're going to draw a tree on the screen, let's say hey, we want to go through an example here of a four row tree. Now, how exactly are we going to print this tree out? Well, there's going to be a certain number of spaces. So what we're going to do just to keep everything simple here is to figure out exactly how many indexes we're going to have. So we know that a tree structure is going to have one at the top and then it's going to have two afterwards and then it's going to have four after that. And then finally, it's going to have eight. So let's go out here and actually model that structure. So I'm just going to act like we have one digit. And I'm actually going to present this in a couple different ways. And I have nothing planned, so see where this takes us. But I guarantee I won't upload this unless it works. OK, so here we go. We have eight. That has been structured. And now we know we need to structure for four. And we also know that the last row only has one space. Or at least that's what we think. So then we want to continue building our tree here. And we're going to have to put the number of spaces here. And that's going to be three. One, two, three, and another one. One, two, three, and another one. And everything looks like it's coming out the way that we want it to. Well, then we need to come in here and throw in our row that's going to represent the two that we know is going to go inside of there. And then finally, we're going to have a whole bunch of spaces, and we're going to try to put that right there. OK, so now that we have that built, and we know that this looks like a tree, and this is pretty much what we want to do, we can get rid of that. Now let's sit here, and let's actually look at what we need to build. Well, we know from looking at this that the first row is going to have an indent, and that indent is going to be seven spaces long, because that's what that is. And if you can't see this, you can view it full screen. It is a 1080p video. Well, then spaces. Well, we know that the indent here is going to be different from the spaces. However, the spaces look like they are all going to be equal to each other. So that makes sense that we have both an indent as well as a spaces that we're going to be tracking. Well, in the first row, we know that there's zero spaces because there's only one number. So now let's move on to our second row. And what does that tell us? Well, in this situation, we see indent again. And there is going to be three for an indent. And then we look at spaces, and we see that there are spaces. And there are going to be seven spaces based off of what we're looking. So there we go. Then we go on to our third row. And again, we're going to have an indent. And that, of course, is going to be one, because that's how many we got. And then we're going to have spaces. And that's going to be equal to three, because that's what we have there. And that brings us to our final fourth row, which is going to have an indent of zero. And spaces are going to be equal to one. All right, so we know that this is what we want to model, but exactly how are we going to model it? That is the problem. Well, if we think about this, let's just come in here and move that up. We know that we want to calculate indent, but we don't necessarily know what it is. And in this situation, I'm going to act like I have no idea how to do math. So we need to figure out a way to calculate 7, then 3, then 1, then 0. How do we do that? Well, in this situation, I'm actually going to cheat. Let's come into Wolfram Alpha. And there it is, Wolfram Alpha right there. And there we go. We just pumped in our numbers, 7, 3, 1, and 0. And we're going to hit equals. And this is going to provide us with our algorithm that we need to solve. All right. And we scroll down through here. And we can see that here it is. This is our answer. This is the guy that's going to provide us with all the numbers we need for our indent. And that's going to be negative 2 to the power of negative n, negative 16 plus 2 to the power of n. That is the guy we need. So now let's jump back over. And let's calculate that out. So it's going to be negative 2 to the power of n multiplied times negative 16 plus 2 to the power of n. And from looking at this, 
n in this situation is going to be represented by 1 as we are generating these indents. So that tells us also we are going to need an iterator to pump out all the different versions of indent and it's going to start at 1 and it also is going to go for as long as there are rows. So I'm just going to type in go till no more rows. And there we go. So now we know we have indent in our code and we're going to need it. We know how to calculate it as well. And we also know that we're going to need an iterator of some sort that's going to start at one and it's going to go as long as there are rows to keep generating indents for. So that leads us to spaces. How are we going to calculate that? Well, the cool thing about generating trees is what was once the indent then becomes the space and so forth and so on. So that means for our spaces, they're going to start off as zero and then whatever indent was the previous time that we cycled through and generated this tree. So now we have three things that we know we have to create here. So now let's go on here and start thinking about some of the other things. Well, we're also going to need to know what index to print. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be one, this is going to be two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Those are the indexes that are going to start off this guy. So to figure out first index per row, let's just go through and think about that for a second. It's going to be zero, and then it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And those are going to be all our indexes. And then look at this. What's so cool? 0, 1, 3, 7. And if we come up here, you're going to see 0, 1, 3, and 7 is right there. Then if we bounce over into Wolfram Alpha again, in this situation, we're going to go 0, 1, 3, and 7 and calculate that and generate ourselves another algorithm we're going to be able to use to generate whatever the first index is. And this guy is the algorithm that we want. So it's going to be 1 half times negative 2 plus 2 to the nth power. Let's jump back over here and put 0.5 or 1 half times negative 2 plus. And then just to keep our head straight, we're going to type in the Java code for generating the power of this number. And we'll type in 2. And in this situation, we're also going to use the iterator. The iterator is this guy up here. Need an iterator. This is actually going to be iterator and right here as well. Okay, so now we got a whole bunch more of these guys. So what is going to be our number of items per row? Something else we're going to need to calculate. Well, if we look at this again, you're going to see one, two, four, and eight. So number of items per row. And that's going to be one, two, four, and eight doubles every single time. Well, I'm going to be lazy again. I'm just going to copy this, jump over into Wolfram Alpha. And no, this isn't an advertisement for Wolfram Alpha. Just using it to do quick math. All right, so now we type that in there. Rather than thinking too much, scroll down here, and it's 2 to the nth minus 1. That is how we're going to calculate that. So we're just going to go math, power of, 2, iterator again, minus 1. And we're able to figure that one out as well. And the only other thing I can think of that we're going to need is the maximum index per row that we're going to print. Max index per row. And that's going to be a very easy calculation. That's just going to be index to print first plus items per row. And as you can see, this is slowly starting to look like code, but in general, that's all that I'm doing. So that's how we're going to generate that. Well, now that we have all our numbers together, let's think about what we're going to do. Well, let's actually come up here right inside of here. Well, in essence, we're going to go indent, and then we're going to go number. This is going to be the process of printing all this stuff out. Again, we're going to go indent and number, and then we're going to have a space, and we're going to have another number. Let's just copy this so I don't have to type it out again. And then on the third row, we're going to go indent number, space, number, space, number, space, number. So that's one, two, three, four numbers, and there's one, two, three spaces. So what this tells me is I need one indent followed by multiple numbers and spaces every single time that I create this. Now based off of all the things that we just did here, I pretty much have everything I need to actually write this code. So let's just copy it and let's jump over and let's write some. Okay, this is actually going to be the last part of the algorithms tutorial. I just decided to do this on a whim. So I have some of this stuff here, but in essence all this is doing is it's generating an array that I am then going to print out on the screen as a tree. That's all we're going to do. So that brings us to this point right here. So this is print tree. 
please bear with me I'm doing a lot of this out of my head so there we go I put in everything that we're gonna need here actually I don't need all this well I'll leave that there and this is gonna help me write all my code so what's some of the things that I'm gonna need in regards to printing this tree well I can only really think of anything the only thing that's gonna change is the number of rows that are going to need to be printed out so then let's continue on all right so something that I'm gonna need first off that's not gonna change at least in the very beginning is spaces so I want to create spaces and give it the value of zero and we know that the value of spaces is going to be equal to whatever indent was from that day forward so we can just leave it the way that it is then I also know that I'm gonna need an iterator and it's gonna to have to start out with the value of one and why do I know that because I need an iterator that starts at one and that's going to be used in the place of n here and then to calculate multiple other different things like here and so forth and so on so there's my iterator then what do I need to do well I need to keep printing things out as long as I have rows so that tells me that I need a while loop see I used while in defining what I was trying to do and this is iterator not iteration and I'm gonna continue printing stuff out on the screen as long as my iterator is less than my number of rows now inside of my while loop what do I need to do well one thing I need to do is calculate what indent is gonna be equal to so put that in there and I can get rid of some of this stuff well here is the calculation for indent right there so to calculate it on my own I know that I'm gonna to need to convert this into an integer and I'm also gonna put absolute value in this situation and then I'm gonna go math power negative two I'm actually going to do a negative iterator actually I prefer calling this iteration it just makes more sense to me so I'm gonna change it this way so negative iteration multiplied times negative 16 plus and all this stuff that I'm doing here is coming from right there of course and then I'm gonna go math to the power of two iteration get rid of that and a semicolon and there you go did it right so now we're calculating our indent every time well then the next thing we need to do is index to print first and to get that guy that is actually going to be this guy right here so let's just cut it and throw it up here so that we can work off of it convert this into an integer and then we're going to do one half times negative two plus power of two iteration and there we go now I know what the first index to print is going to be then I have my items per row and I can get rid of this number of items per row that's gonna be this guy right here int just call this items per row which is exactly what it is throw that right in there I have to call this an int and I'm gonna call this iteration again so as you can see I'm basically just turning the words into code here then I need to calculate my maximum index to print and if we come down here you can see index to print items per row let's bring it back up here it's kinda of what I did is that right items per row and there we go maximum index to print per row well then what do I need to do well I need to print indent once every single row and then print a whole bunch of numbers and spaces so that tells me I need to create a for loop and I'm just gonna call this int j is equal to zero j less than whatever the indent is j plus plus and I'm just going to use this to print a whole bunch of spaces all right well now that I have that in there I also know that I have to print different numbers of numbers and spaces depending upon how many rows or how many different things I want to do so how am I going to describe this well I want to go from my index to print first that's going to be the first index per row and then I'm going to continue printing as long as L is less than max index to print or the maximum index to print per row and then I'm going to increment that now from this point I want to then print a number out on the screen heap L and that is going to be the key that's that's what's going to get printed out on the screen and then after that I need to print a certain number of spaces on the screen so throw that in there and I'm just going to change this to K and this to K and this to K and this is going to be spaces that I want to print out on the screen and then what do we know from looking at all this stuff well spaces is going to start off at zero and then it's going to become whatever indent was so after I'm all done printing all a whole entire row I want to say hey spaces you're now equal to whatever indent was equal to previously and iteration I'm going to increment you and then because it's the end of the row I want to put a new line so there we go that is basically turning all those words into actual code it's not optimized but we'll get to that in a second so if we file save that and let's come in here and give it a test drive so here we are down in main and don't worry too much about what heap means at this point 
like I said, I'm going to do it, cover it in the last part of the tutorial series. It's just an array that's going to get printed out on the screen as a tree. That's all you need to know. All right, so let's say we want this to be 15 spaces, and I can just go new heap, generate filled array, and it's just going to fill my array up with numbers. Don't worry about all that. Cover it in the next part of the tutorial. And that there is going to just generate everything and throw it into order, not that it necessarily needs to be. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, let's go and actually print this guy out. So I'm going to go new heap dot, and we'll come in here and test out print our tree. And we know that we have four rows inside of it. Let's file save it, see what happens. And there you can see is our tree, and it's all printed out nice and beautiful, exactly like we wanted. Now there's only one problem with this. What happens if we change this to number of rows three, file save, and execute? Well, that prints out all nice and dandy. But what if we go in here and try to change it to five or something? Yeah, I had guaranteed errors. There we go, all kinds of errors. So what would we do if we wanted to generate the ability to be able to print out both two digit numbers and not be stuck with just one digit number, but also we wanted to be able to print pretty much any type of tree we could possibly imagine? Well, tune in to the next part of the video tutorial and you'll get your answer. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.